All right, so folks, the goal here today is, is that this is a workshop. This is for the staff and the budget committee and everything, and for the council. The way that we're going to proceed here this morning is, is it will go, I think it's going to go police, fire, public works, library. Is that right? Town manager first? Correct. Police, fire, public works. Here's the deal. Police and fire and public works, you have one hour. <laughs> All right? You don't have you don't yeah. you don't have an hour and fifteen minutes. You don't have an hour and one minute. You have one hour, so be done in one hour. The goal is is that we try to finish by twelve thirty. Now that may not happen. We may be here till two, but the goal is that we're going to try to finish by twelve thirty. Um, so I'm not going to go through the the normal procedure of opening a meeting and everything else because this is a workshop. Um, although it is being televised today, the one thing I do want to do is I want to take just one quick second. Um, is, you know, we, we lost a member of our staff very recently. I'd like all of you to, you know, just take a moment and reflect on the 40 years that Libby spent here, you know, serving this community. Nobody did it with more kindness. I mean, just a great lady with a smile on her face all the time who, frankly, everybody loved. And, you know, um, and she will be missed. So... Take a moment, it doesn't have to be now, and reflect on what, what that really meant to the community and, and to the people she served. And we should all strive to be more like her. Never a mean word to say, always kindness. So to Libby, thank you. Okay, with that, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's my privilege to be here for the second time um, presenting the town manager's proposed budget. I'm joined by the uh, finance director and assistant town manager. And if I uh, get anything wrong or they want to amplify a point that I make, I would invite them to jump in. Um, we're here to talk about the fiscal year 25 budget, which, as everyone knows, covers the period running 7-1 of 24 through 6-30 of 25. Um, the, the process hasn't changed. Uh, there are two public hearings that will occur. Uh, right now they're scheduled for December 4th and January 15th um, with full opportunity for public uh, discussion. As you know, Mr. Chairman, there's a series of workshops along the way um, uh, that coincide with town council meetings, and uh, I'm sure there will be additional public participation um, in, those, in those forums. Um, a deliberative session will be held on February 10th. And that is the opportunity for the voters to finalize budget items. Um, the voters at the deliberative session have essentially all of the powers uh, of an open town meeting um, with respect to the warrant articles, amendments, et cetera. And so that is uh, certainly a, an opportunity for people to uh, be heard and to exercise their rights. Um, and then what occurs on election day is a choice between the proposed operating budget as it may be amended or not at the deliberative session, and a default budget. Um, as everyone, I, I believe, is aware, the default budget is merely intended to provide the same level of services uh, that were previously provided uh, in, in the last approved budget. Um, it is a simple calculation. It, is, uh, it uses the starting, as a starting point, the fiscal year 24 budget. And it is increased or reduced, as the case may be, by debt service, contractual items, salary and other employee-related costs, uh, such as contained in a collective bargaining agreement that would have previously been ratified by the voters, previous, uh, obligations previously incurred or mandated by law, um, and then reduced by one-time expenditures that were contained in the FY24 operating budget. This is the slide that um, I think everybody will be most interested in. It has the, uh, what I think will be the headline today, and that is uh, a, an increase in the default budget uh, of 8.18% over the fiscal year 24 budget. We'll talk more about the reason for that in a minute. Um, as in prior years, uh, there is a difference between the town manager's proposed operating budget and the default budget, and uh, as has been the custom, uh, the proposed uh, budget uh, that we've prepared is lower than the default budget. Um, in this case, lower than, than typical, uh, approximately $200,000 lower than the default budget or just around half a percent. Um, and I think it, it is important to note as we uh, work through this today that over the past year, the municipal cost index, which is a measure of uh, what it costs to provide municipal services, 
has been running between 0.79 and 6.27 percent, and it now rests at 1.42 percent. CPI, of course, uh, has uh, you know been in, in the same ballpark, running 3.0 percent to 6.4 percent, now resting at 3.7 percent. Um, what accounts for the increases to default? Well, uh, a, n a number of uh, different things. The first is the waste management contract that we renegotiated last year. Um, that contract uh, w contained uh, what's called a force majeure provision um, that entitled the uh, vendor to ask for a contract adjustment based on inflationary conditions. Uh, we received extensive legal advice on that. Um, it went through a number of different hearings with the town council. Um, as I said, it was uh, approved uh, last year, and uh, for that reason, it is part of the default budget. Um, the most, and, and of note, that is the most, uh, our, our largest single contract uh, that, that we have. Um, most significantly, the uh, health insurance program that we have, uh, those premiums are increasing $1.4 million. Um, this is a 19% increase followed by uh, a significant increase last year. Um, and other increases to our insurances as well. Um, and you can see that dental insurance, property and liability insurance, unemployment and workers' comp insurance are going up as well. Um, and then there are other contractual increases, uh, such as those contained in the CBAs that I mentioned before. Um, as wages increase, so too do retirement contributions. Um, and you can see a $280,000 increase in the employer share of the New Hampshire retirement uh, premium. Um, a couple of things about this slide. Uh, the, as we discussed last year, during the pandemic, people didn't go to the doctor. Uh, and so during that period of time, um, we received a return of surplus premiums from Health Trust. Rates were stable. Um, but when people, uh, when the world opened up and people started going back to the doctor, uh, not only did uh, claims increase significantly, but at the same time, people uh, were, were exhibiting conditions that had been deferred for two years. Uh, they, you know, could have been caught earlier, were more expensive. And what we're seeing is that uh, the, while claims are generally up, the number of high dollar claims um, is up significantly. The thing with our health insurance program is that health trust is mandated by law to return surplus premiums to policyholders. And what, uh, what has happened is, uh, it, as I said earlier, that during the pandemic, um, that was occurring and rates were stable. Um, but because health trust was not able to retain surplus premiums, um, we now are seeing a building of what's called their capital adequacy reserve. Um, they have to have on hand enough money to pay projected claims, even if their projections are off. And that's what the capital adequacy reserve is. Um, our increase is in line with other um, health trust plan sponsors increases. Um, and this is something that I think you know, we, we certainly will talk about during this budget process. We are shopping the health insurance uh, to determine if a better rate can be achieved. But it is significant to note that uh, the health insurance is um, sp specified. It's called out in each of the collective bargaining agreements that we have uh, with our various unions. And so that's something that would need to be negotiated with the unions, um, assuming that we could find somebody who would provide a better rate and a better, uh, a better package. We do suggest uh, looking at the buyout that we offer. Um, right now, we're offering a buyout uh, for not taking the health insurance, um, I think, between twenty-five and $10,000, depending on the union. And uh, that is something that we suggest the uh, Budget Committee and the Town Council should look at uh, potentially increasing to encourage uh, folks to opt out of our insurance. We can talk about that more as we go forward. Um, and then, you know, operational contracts, these are mostly in the IT sphere. Um, everybody has seen the news about what happened to Peterborough uh, with a cyber incident that resulted in the loss of millions of dollars that were not ultimately recovered. We've been investing in cybersecurity since I took office, and um, those contracts become part of the default budget. All right, so I have a series of questions to try to level set some of this. You can go back to slide. 
right, so waste management, if I recall the numbers correctly, we're probably somewhere ballpark $200 a household. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. So if we went if, so we went to private haulers, it would be significantly more. So of the 10,000 households in town, it's about $200 of their taxes goes to waste management from the standpoint of recycling and trash. Um, from the standpoint of health insurance, um, <clears throat> open enrollment's happening now across the country and everything. Um, I have health insurance through my employer. Um, actually, they just forwarded to us that we took an 8% increase and that the company was absorbing half and the employees would have to absorb half. Um, we're, con we're contractually bound by whatever we have in the CBAs with regards to who pays what. Correct. So while the health insurance may be going up, the, the employees do pay a portion. Um, there is one bargaining unit that pays a portion, um, but in order to incentivize the employees. That's when we went to the health savings correct, accounts. Correct. correct. So, but there is, we'll call it participation. Yes, by some. Um, and then there's also the, the health saving accounts that we did, which actually reduced our rate a number of years ago. That's right. So we're just winding up back where we started three years ago. Correct. Um, with regards to the, um, the contractual pieces, these are all of the pieces that are coming from the contracts that were approved last March. That's right. Um, last March and the uh, election. Prior, and the prior yes. years. Correct. So that's why these are all baked in. So, um, so Justin, riddle me this. Where are we from a standpoint of, um, of salaries, benefits, FICA, et cetera, loaded labor? Are we around 83, 84% of our total budget? Um, I would say without going and doing calculation, that's probably about accurate. So we're really, so when we're looking at this, we're, we're bound by 83% of the number or whatever 83% of $40 million is. So that really has to put it, that puts us in an overall position as we go into this budget of that if we want to reduce anything, we have to decide what services to cut. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the one piece of good news that uh, emerges from this budget is that we have a multipurpose bond falling off this year. That results in a savings of uh, over $700,000 to the default budget and uh, gets us to where we are. Is that this building in the police department? Yep. So this building in the police department are 20 years old? Correct. Interesting. It's now fully paid for. Um, Projected revenues are dollars that uh, either assist with the tax rate or uh, do not need to be raised through taxation. Um, and, you know, it's evident that the inflationary environment that we are living through is affecting the budget negatively. Here um, is a demonstration of how it also affects the budget positively. Um, one example of that is interest on investments. Uh, we have, through the efforts of Justin and his staff, been able to out, outpace our revenue projections there, uh, given the high interest rates and given the fund balance that, uh, that we have on hand. That's one of the things that Justin talks about when we are discussing the importance of fund balances, um, having the ability to receive a return on that uh, investment uh, during times like this. Um, the, you know, we, we are also uh, looking at I think some of the uh, staffing changes that we've made, filling open positions, um, is, is going to assist us while this con uh, economic condition continues in uh, chasing new revenue. And one of the examples is uh, motor vehicle revenue. I think there's potential to bring in additional motor vehicle revenue um, uh, in, in, in concert with the clerk's office. Um, and so being fully staffed and, and having a healthy staff there is, is important. Um, Justin is uh, is staffing up, um, filling open positions, and that's important in that in, in his ability to um, do some of those higher end functions, like moving money uh, to the accounts that have the highest interest rate, um, and having a staff that supports him is is important to that effort. Uh, my department uh, has staffed up, and so I am uh, more engaged in terms of uh, uh, pursuing economic development, expanding the tax base. Um, uh, in concert with the assistant town manager. So all of those uh, things are, are important and um, highlight the importance of our, of our staff to um, 
bringing in these revenues. What are some of the challenges uh, that are contained not only within this budget, but uh, are you know, projected to continue into the future? Increasing demand for services. Um, you know, as I said last year, we have more residents and visitors than ever before. Uh, everything is increasingly complex. Um, and as one example of that, you know, we, we've, we've gotten more aggressive pursuing grant funding. Um, over the past year, we've secured millions of dollars in infrastructure money. Um, we have secured millions of dollars in ARPA money. All of that comes with onerous reporting and tracking requirements, and that um, unfortunately uh, requires staff time. Um, the rising cost of goods and services, we're now seeing that in uh, the budget, in the default budget. Whereas you know, those conditions hit a household budget in real time. Um, it is a lagging indicator when it comes to a municipal budget, and that's because everything almost is under contract. Uh, it's just taken this long for the conditions we're all experiencing to hit our budget. Um, the labor market, uh, you know, the contracts that uh, were ratified by the voters reflect the tight labor market. And as all employers have had to adjust um, during a period where wages have risen more uh, than they have risen in a generation, uh, you know, that, that is something that's affecting our budget as well. Um, and uh, it's, Im it's important um, to uh, talk about, you know, how the default budget has been handled in the past. While we have all of these challenges, um, you know, we've been operating in default for a period of 10 years. And I, I present to you what you could refer to as a default budget today, a, a budget that's lower than default. It is within the, the parameters of the default budget. However, like we did last year, we're also um, able to make, move, move some money around within that budget to, to set us up for success in the future. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then just the other uh, challenge that I would, what I would refer to as state and federal mandates. Um, one example of that would be our uh, MS4 permit. That's a permit uh, that requires Londonderry to make sure that water that's being discharged into um, streams and rivers is, uh, is clean. And that's under the Clean Water Act. And that imposes all kinds of burdens without any, um, without any funding on the municipal government. And we can talk about that uh, more in the presentation. A uh, little bit more good news. Um, you know, we're under contract for most of our, uh, our fuel, um, and so that's going to be natural gas um, and uh, as well as electricity. Those are all uh, contracts that do not fluctuate as uh, fuel and electricity costs increase, and so those are in place mostly through 2026. That's something that we're not suffering from quite as much as other, uh, others are. The 35 Gilcrest Road transaction, that has the potential to bring in $1.9 million to the town. That's something that was ratified on the uh, uh, ballot last year, and uh, we're in the closing stages of that transaction. Um, and so that's, that's positive news. The debt service reduction I talked about. ARPA money, um, the uh, ARPA award to the town was some, you know, somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of $2.8 million. We have pushed out some of those dollars, and we are reserving uh, $2 million for a water infrastructure project that the council addressed at its most recent meeting, and I can talk about that more in, uh, shortly. Um, last year's changes. So this is something that I, uh, I referenced on the last slide. And what we were able to do last year was temporarily budget less or lower uh, for certain open uh, positions, and then to move that savings two other neglected lines in our budget. Um, and some of those lines were building and vehicle maintenance um, for the police and fire departments, which had really ridiculously low uh, lines to maintain those buildings. Um, and we've continued that work. Uh, it, we haven't needed, needed to do quite as much of it as we did last year. Um, but you know, the, the, the good news is that even though we continue in default, we found a way to make sure that the default budget going forward um, at least sets us up for success. And then there's the FY23 and 24 budget performance. 
Uh, we've carefully managed the budget. We came in with a, uh, a significant surplus last year. Um, the budget, uh, you know, continues to look good, and that's a factor of, uh, you know, careful, um, uh, you know, carefully managing the budget, fiscal restraint, but also the the revenue, um, the revenues out outpacing uh, projections. <clears throat> We are proposing to fund some of our trust funds and capital reserves, as we do every year. Um, the Pillsbury Cemetery expansion, as everybody knows, we're running out of money. Uh, we're running out of space in the Pillsbury Cemetery. Um, and you can see the breakdown between uh, the proposed use of fund balance and taxation. We're doing the same with fire equipment um, and proposing a 50-50 split, UFB to taxation. Cable equipment, this is... Um, uh, a paper appropriation, I believe, Justin, you, you, I have correct, is this is our franchise payment. It doesn't affect the tax rate. It doesn't require the use of UFB. That's correct. This is one that by state law we're required to have on there because you're not allowed to add capital reserves or expendable maintenance roadway trust funds without voter approval with the exception of the interest that it earns throughout the year. Okay. Thank you. Um, and our... Um, our recreation fund, uh, we're proposing uh, $10,000 through taxation. Expendable maintenance trust fund, this is, this is a, a very important fund to maintain the, the town's uh, infrastructure. Again, a 50-50 split. And then the roadway maintenance trust fund, we usually raise that uh, through taxation, and we're proposing $650,000 this year. One note on that is that is up from last year's uh, request, and the reason for that is uh, we received a one-time payment of additional uh, highway block grant money last year. Uh, that has not materialized this year, and so we're um, asking the taxpayers to uh, return to the historic level there. Uh, of course, it, we're not just talking about the budget during the budget process. We're talking as well about the separate warrant articles. And the, um, the Lions Hall uh, project is, uh, is, is one of those uh, potential warrant articles. Uh, what we heard, I think, uh, what you heard uh, during the public um, process was the need for phasing, um, the need perhaps to save, and uh, the feeling that doing a three and a half million dollar project um, it was was probably biting off too much at this time. That's that's really uh, solidified by the um, you know the significant increase to default. I, I don't think we can ask the taxpayers for. Um, you know, anything north of uh, the $500,000 that I propose. Um, that is something that is in here uh, as a placeholder for discussion um, and certainly can change, all of these can change uh, throughout this process. Uh, the MS4 capital uh, reserve, as I said, we are behind on our MS4 uh, work and it's eventually going to catch up with us. And so in order to um, comply with this federal mandate, this federal legally required work, um, we need to uh, pay for it. And so we're proposing to establish a reserve fund that will allow us to continue to do that into the future. Um, we, you know, we did some good work with our DPW vehicles last year, but there's, there's significant work to be done. As you know, those vehicles are parked outside, and uh, they are, many of them, at or beyond their useful life. <coughs> and so the, there is a request uh, for um, funding to secure some additional vehicles. The water project that I discussed at the last town council meeting, as everyone will, will recall, that is a $25 million project that will bring uh, water down High Range Road to 102. And that is really the foundation for a future Londonderry water system. Um, the town has a request in to the Drinking and Groundwater Trust Fund for $10 million. The town is proposing to use $2 million that I referenced in ARPA funding. Um, and it appears that an additional $2 million may be needed um, in town dollars. That's still a very good deal because uh, not only is this a critical first step to remediate this, um, the most contaminated area in town by PFAS, um, it is an opportunity to secure a $25 million project um, at a cost to London area of $4 million. Um, so I suggest that that is something that should strongly be considered. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you are aware, we're owed a report from the Pickleball Task Force sometime this month. I don't know what the report will say. I don't know what, um, what the recommendation will be or if there will be a dollar uh, value attached to it. But 
uh, certainly that's something that could uh, come up during the budget process, and so I've put it in there as TBD. And then uh, you know, the Treasurer Amendment that's been discussed at several of the last Town Council meetings, um, the uh, Council will need to decide whether to have a public hearing on that and ultimately whether to move that to the ballot. Mr. Town Manager, will you be going any further into what the 500000 for 256 Mammoth Road will cover? Um, the, the, so I... Do you have it, slides on that further or...? Not at this time. So that is in there as a, um, uh, on, the, on the idea that this will be a, uh, an account that we will contribute to in the future, um, either to you know, make um, significant improvements or to bring the uh, Lions Hall back to the point where it can be open to the public. Obviously, uh, the first items would be things like the floor, ADA accessibility and um, building cool. sprinklers. Um, but that is in there for discussion purposes only, and um, it is very preliminary at this time. Okay, and but then I guess it may go nowhere. <clears throat> of course, um, and I guess just have between your heads and Justin's and uh, Dave Wally's heads of thinking and maybe talking with our third-party contractor of what is the cost impact of pushing this down the road. Well, we've seen drastic increase if we actually push this down the road and kick it down the road. Or is it actually a better cost savings to do it now compared to later? I, I mean, I hate to spend so much money now, right. as I know the school's looking at a lot of other things, but I would hate to all of a sudden have this turn into you know, a couple million more because we've pushed it down the road and materials and labor and everything else have really increased. Certainly. I mean, we've certainly seen that phenomenon with the SAU office project, mm -hmm. um, which you know, just in the course of a year increased by you know, a number of millions of dollars. So that's a, that's a very good point. I think that um, I think I think we lack data uh, at this point as well. How much support there is uh, to do a significant project at the Lions Hall, and I think having something like this on the ballot um, will uh, provide more data um, that will be useful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to let Justin go through uh, his favorite slide of the year and talk about fund balance. <laughs> Absolutely. So as Mike has described, there's, there's several articles in which we're looking to utilize fund balance to help offset the cost of the entire projects that, or the warrant articles that are coming. Uh, as of June 30th, 24 at this time, there is about 6.2 million. This also takes out the 200,000 from the Taxpayer Relief Act back in 2019. Um, based on our policy, the town's current policy, uh, we have about 1.8 is what we're required to keep for our minimum reserves. That leaves us with about 4.3 being able to spend. Um, as I say every single year, this is the town's current policy. It's, it's out of line of what other areas say we should be spending and what we should make, maintain for fund balance. Um, the Department of Revenue recommends, based on what they recommend, it would be about 183,000 is what we have to spend. Uh, per the Governmental Financial Office Association, it is about 51000 is what we have available to spend. And this really comes down to the differences <coughs> between the policies that we are currently have in place. Um, DRA looks at the total appropriations and says, I believe it's about between 5 and 7% is what they recommend. They look at um, total appropriations for the entire town. Correct. So it would be total appropriations for the school and the town. Correct. You're looking at the full picture. We're only since we have our own separate designate uh, undesignated fund balances now as governments. We're only our policy is only looking at the town side. That is correct. Um, come the first of the month, we still owe the school their money, though. I didn't say we didn't owe them their money. Correct. So that that, that policy pol takes that into account. It's the one opportunity we get to disagree with DRA. Correct. I mean, because just because because their rule disagree is counter to what our rule is i understand what you're yep. saying okay if it was up to you we wouldn't take any money out of it. <laughs> that is <laughs> that that's why it's not up to you <laughs> it's true but you would also be looking at a healthier interest revenue that sure would work with really the tax rate this, that the, what you're saying dr is is talking about it's not about 40 million they're talking about 125 million correct they look at the county so as well clear. Yes, they look at the I, county I'm as well. I'm sorry to interrupt at, you, but nope, I didn't want to have any misunderstandings here. You're absolutely good. Okay. They look at the entire obligations that the town has. 
because come December, I believe it's going to be 18th, we owe the county $4.2 million. If our fund balance policy doesn't have it, we have to take out a TAN in order to pay that money. As a Dillon rule state, this is the only time we get to disagree with them. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and GFOAs is, we should keep on hand roughly two months worth of expenditures, which again, goes to include the monthly payment to the school district. Right. We'll so that's why you see that drastic difference between <laughs> all of them. No, I appreciate it, Justin. Yep. I just want to make sure we're very clear that no, absolutely. It, it, we're calculating against a bigger number than the one we're proposing. Correct. And if I may, Mr. Chair, the, the school's undesignated fund balance is not as high as the town's undesignated fund balance. I don't think it's close. Because they it's only percentage-wise. I think the school is not able to retain as much as correct. We're, correct. We're yeah, the school has a limit on what they can retain. Right. They, they actually have to give the money back. Where we're... This is, this was, we were as high as $9 million at one point? Correct. Eight, nine million. Part of the that. reason we're down to $6 million is, is because we had a lawsuit with the power plant, we had to, and we had to settle that lawsuit, and we used the undesignated fund balance to do that. Now that the power plant is now operational and making money again and everything, I'm sure we're going to have another little chat with them about what they pay in taxes, which should go in the, in the upward direction. Because at one point they were at 8.5 million a year, and now they're at 5 million a year? I don't have those numbers. I thought it was my somewhere head. in that vicinity. I know they're paying at least five million per year. Right, paying at least five million. We were up over eight. They're still point. the town's largest taxpayer. Oh, listen, and we love we love the power plant. Most people don't even know where it is. But okay, well, thank you. I mean, I I, I appreciate DRA's you know opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just here to provide what I can. <laughs> Listen, it has nothing to do with you. Nope, I know. <laughs> and Justin, how long are we uh, doing our $200,000 UFB Taxpayer Relief Act for? I believe the, we have one more year after this. Okay. Um, the way it was written, it says through uh, 2024, and I'm not sure if that meant fiscal year or calendar year. So if it's calendar year, we have one more year. If it's fiscal, this is the last year. But I believe it was based on calendar year because taxes typically are, te not typically, taxes are based on calendar year. And when so you, we have one more year of it. Okay. And when you present at least this item for the taxpayers on uh, our um, budget session day, uh, are you able to maybe provide like how that actually affects their taxes? Like how much of a reduction is it actually affecting their taxes? So that people. Can so prior to, I can tell you right now, that two hundred thousand prior to this recent revaluation was four cents on your tax rate. Okay. Um, the reason I'm saying prior to the revaluation is typically fifty thousand. Uh, every fifty thousand is one penny on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. This year, it's now every sixty thousand because of the revaluation. Okay, great, thank you. So, since you brought up that. Um, when are we expecting to get, you know, from the almighty DRA, our tax rate for December 1st bills, which will not be due December 1st? That is correct. They will not be due December 1st. Um, we should be expecting those within the next week or so, next couple weeks. Have they given us any indication of where they think the rate's going to fall, or are they just playing this close to their vest? They have not given us any indication at this point. It should, the rate should go down, right? So, yes, but it's important to keep in mind the rate should go down. That does not necessarily mean the bill will go down because your property valuation has increased. Totally understand. When, you know, we've had some years in which we you know, asked for the bill to be paid on like <coughs> December 22nd. Everyone's always happy then to pay it. Not that they're ever happy, but they're most happy to pay it then. I feel the majority of those phone calls, yes. So um, we've also we, had people very upset that it was due later than that because they want to make sure that it was accounted for in their uh, personal income taxes. So um, do we have any idea when we think the bill will be due this year? Do we have any idea when we'll send them out? I know that's a one-part, two-part question, sorry. It is. Um, <laughs> it, it, we are very optimistic it will be due before December 31st. It will not be due before... December 15th, so sometime in that time frame, I would say. We'll get you a little red suit. <laughs> <laughs> I believe green would fit better at that point. <laughs> um, thank you. Absolutely. Anything right. further? Now that we've got Justin all wound up about UFB, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, 
just uh, talk talk for a second about overlay and veterans exemption. Um, we are your uh, time's almost up, so let's. <laughs> we're proposing to fund the overlay at uh, account which is used to pay abatements at one hundred seventy one thousand. I don't believe there's any change there. Uh, we are uh, continuing to fund the veterans tax credit at eight hundred eighty six thousand five hundred dollars. That there's no change there. And then the elderly tax exemption doesn't have a, uh, a budgetary allocation because it's an exemption versus a credit, and it just affects – it just reallocates the tax burden. Obviously, the uh, council just approved some changes expanding the uh, that benefit at a recent meeting. Um, this is the tax rate setting process that we actually just talked about, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the voters approved the budget and the warrant articles in March. Um, the valuation is complete in October. But it's looking at values that were in effect uh, April 1st. That's the uh, beginning of the tax year. The uh, state revenues are announced in October uh, or later, as uh, is typical. And then uh, other revenues, such as rooms and meals, can be revised. The DRA sets the tax rate in October or November, and then the tax bills are sent out. Um, future considerations for town services, uh, the, uh, the Lions Hall. Sewer and water infrastructure, uh, I touched on that, uh, but that's something that we need to continue to invest in. Uh, the Pillsbury Cemetery, which, as I uh, mentioned earlier, and perhaps uh, Director Wally uh, will address, uh, is running out of space. We need to make adjustments so that we can, um, again, f uh, fulfill a, another legally required uh, obligation. The, the town is required to provide uh, either by contract or directly uh, the burial of, of residents. And uh, the DPW facility, which I'm sure will feature prominently in Dave's presentation. Uh, this is the budget uh, calendar. And uh, in closing, Mr. Chairman, I would, uh, I would just acknowledge that uh, this is not uh, a lot of good news that, that you've just heard. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult uh, time not only for residents and taxpayers, um, but those conditions that uh, are affecting all of our own uh, wallets are now affecting the municipal budget. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, we, we've, we've been smart about how we've constructed this default budget, as we were last year, um, to set us up for success going forward. I think that, that, that I'm proud of that work. Um, and I'm proud that, uh, you know, even though uh, the default budget is what the default budget is, we have sharpened our pencils and are proposing to return $200,000 uh, of that uh, significant increase to, to taxpayers. All right, before we move to the police department, any other further comments? I, the only thing to add is, is that I have been advised by the chairman of the school board that they're going to be moving forward with a 30 plus million dollar bond. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about warrant articles and everything else, asking the voters for you know, um, millions of dollars. That's probably part of the reason why we're looking at the lion's hole and going, hmm, let's think about this a little bit more. But that is a big number. So keep that in mind as you're going forward in this. Keep in mind that bring solutions. If you think a service doesn't need to be needed anymore, question that service. And let's, you know, let's go from there. Um, if anybody needs coffee, grab coffee real quick. We'll transition to the police department and, uh, and we'll go forward. Um,